My mother-in-law casually broke the news to me, leaving me stunned. We're going to be living together now. We remodeled the house into a duplex for convenience. Oh, and since the property is in your name, Emma, could you cover the $80,000 remodeling bill? Both my mother-in-law and husband laughed as if they'd won something. Seeing this, I felt determined to confront them with the truth, a truth even my husband didn't know, along with some solid evidence. I'm Emma Davis, 26 years old. I live in a peaceful, nature-filled area a bit away from downtown. I work an office job and enjoy drawing illustrations as a hobby. Recently, I've been uploading my drawings on social media and love reading the comments I get every day. My husband, who is three years older than me, and I are living happily in an old farmhouse that we bought after getting married, but since our wedding, there's been a monthly visitor to our home who always gives me a headache. Bang, bang. Emma, Emma, I'm here. Open up quickly. My mother-in-law's voice rang out as she knocked persistently on the sliding front door. Sighing, I rushed to the door. Coming, mother-in-law, I tried to smile as I opened it. She stood there, holding a large bag, looking annoyed. There are so many bugs here. Is George, my husband, still at work? Poor thing. Working even on a Saturday, I brought some of his favorite food. While dealing with her constant chatter, I kept a fake smile on my face. My mother-in-law is always around. Trying to take care of her only child, my husband, even though we're married now, she even instructs me on how to do housework. Last time, she rearranged everything in the fridge, and I had to waste time hunting down the ingredients to make breakfast the next morning. Before we got married, my husband had told me, if my parents ever need help, we'll live together. I want you to be prepared for that. I had mentally accepted this, but the thought of living with my mother-in-law every day filled me with dread. Two years into our marriage, one day, my husband told me that his father had fallen down the stairs and broken his leg. We'll need to help them now. Let's live together, just like we talked about before we got married. I felt worried for my father-in-law, so I agreed to the plan without hesitation. But deep down, I was anxious that moving in together would mean I'd lose time for my beloved drawing hobby. I asked my husband if I could continue drawing, but all he said was, I want you to prioritize the house, before leaving for work. Alone in my room. I felt like I had half given up, feeling sad about my selfish husband. As I looked back at all the illustrations I had drawn, I began to process my feelings. I had just made up my mind to live with my in-laws when something unexpected happened. One day at work, I suddenly felt numbness in my hands and feet, followed by intense dizziness. I collapsed. Luckily, a coworker quickly called an ambulance, and I was rushed to the hospital. It turned out I had suffered a stroke at a young age. Although I had been warned about my high blood pressure before, I regretted not taking it seriously and avoiding the doctor. The stroke led to a two-month hospital stay, including surgery and rehabilitation. During this time, I noticed my husband showed very little concern for me. After the diagnosis, I called him with trembling hands, but all he said was, I see, so living together will be postponed, huh? I was shocked that he seemed more concerned about the plans to live with his parents than about my health. Since my father-in-law was still in the hospital with a broken leg, there was no immediate need to worry about caregiving. This was a small relief, allowing me to focus on my recovery. We also didn't have children, so I didn't have to worry about them either. Still, the thought of my mother-in-law's frequent comments, I want to see my grandchild soon, popped into my mind, trying to shake off the thought. I reached for my sketchbook. I had been so busy preparing to move in with my in-laws and dealing with my health issues that I hadn't had time to draw. I realized that once I moved in with them, I would likely have even less time for my hobby. I decided to use this hospital stay as my last bit of free time, a gift from life, and fully enjoy my drawing. I also resolved that when this period was over, I would do my best for my husband and in-laws, whether it was housework or anything else. The two months in the hospital flew by, and soon it was time to leave. My husband casually asked if I wanted him to pick me up, but I wanted some time alone, so I said no though I felt a little guilty. On the bus ride home, I saw the familiar sights outside the window and realized I was almost home. The sunlight shining through the green leaves was dazzling and beautiful. I felt a deep sense of bittersweetness, knowing this would be my last time in this peaceful, nature-filled place. Since my in-law's house is closer to the city, my life would change completely. Feeling a bit sad, I slowly got off at my usual bus stop. As I walked toward my home, ready to say goodbye to it, I suddenly stopped in my tracks at the sight before me. 
As I looked at each of the illustrations I had drawn over time, I started sorting out my feelings. Just when I had decided to live with my in-laws, something unexpected happened. While working one day, I suddenly felt numbness in my hands and feet, followed by intense dizziness. I collapsed. Thankfully, a coworker quickly called an ambulance. I wasn't in immediate danger, but after medical tests, I was diagnosed with a stroke at such a young age. I had been warned about my high blood pressure before, but regretted ignoring it and not going to the doctor. The entire process, from diagnosis to surgery and rehabilitation, took about two months. Everything moved so quickly, and during this time, I noticed my husband showed very little concern for me. After finding out about the stroke, I called my husband with trembling hands. All he said was, I see, so living together will be postponed, huh? I was shocked that he seemed more concerned about the future plans with his parents than about my health. Since my father-in-law was still in the hospital with his broken leg, we didn't have to worry about caregiving right away, which allowed me to focus on my recovery. And since we didn't have kids, that wasn't a concern either. My mother-in-law's usual comment, I want to see my grandchild's face soon, popped into my head, trying to push that thought away. I picked up my sketchbook. I had been too busy preparing to move in with my in-laws and dealing with my health issues to enjoy my favorite hobby, drawing. Once I started living with them, I knew I'd have even less time for it. So, I decided to treat my hospital stay as the last bit of free time I had, a gift from life, and I chose to enjoy drawing as much as I could. I promised myself that when this was over, I would do my best for my husband and in-laws, whether it was housework or anything else. The two-month hospital stay flew by and soon it was time to leave. My husband casually asked if I wanted him to pick me up, but I wanted some time to myself, so I said no, feeling a bit guilty. On the bus ride home, I watched the familiar scenery outside the window and realized I was almost home. The sunlight shining on the green leaves was bright and beautiful, filling me with a bittersweet feeling. I thought to myself, this is goodbye to this peaceful, natural place. Since my in-law's house is near the city, my life would change drastically. Feeling a little sad, I slowly got off the bus at my usual stop. As I walked toward the home I was soon going to leave behind, I suddenly stopped in my tracks at the site in front of me. The phrase, just remodeled it into a duplex, kept replaying in my mind. My mother-in-law had always interfered in our lives, but I never expected her to remodel the house without my permission. Weren't we supposed to move into my in-law's house near the city? Every time my mother-in-law visited our old house, she complained about the bugs and the walk from the station. So why remodel this place? A lot of things had clearly changed. Then, with the TV off, my mother-in-law whispered to me with a grin, the remodeling cost a bit. I believe the house title is under your name, Michelle. Could you handle the payment? Her voice had no trace of apology. It's $80,000, she added with a deeper smile. Those words hit me like a punch. I was stunned, my legs trembling, and I couldn't even reply. As I stared at her in disbelief, my husband quietly entered the room. I rushed to him, hoping he'd take my side. I told him what my mother-in-law had said, clinging to a desperate hope for his reaction. But all he said was, that sounds about right, take care of it, will you? That cold response confirmed what I already knew about him. When I had collapsed from a stroke, he was more concerned about living arrangements than my health. He always obeyed his mother, no matter what. If she said green meant stop, he would stop. If she said red meant go, he would go. My frustration and resentment towards him grew stronger. I was done with this family. I looked at him and said, George, I'm going to divorce you. And Cecilia, I turned to my mother-in-law. You can handle the renovation costs on your own. I turned to leave the room, but they weren't going to let me go so easily. I've lost interest in you anyway, so it's no big deal. But remember, the house is in your name, Emma, so you have to pay, my husband said. Yes. Feel free to leave, but make sure you settle your debts first, my mother-in-law added smugly. I couldn't believe how selfish they were being. I sighed, refusing to turn around, knowing they were probably grinning in victory. Standing tall, I replied, you keep saying the house is in my name, George, but did you forget? I transferred the ownership to you. Their laughter stopped abruptly, and I could feel their panic growing. My husband tried to deny it, saying, I don't remember asking that, and there's no proof but I had anticipated this. I calmly walked past them, opened a drawer, and took out a document. Here's the proof, I said, showing them the paper where it clearly stated the ownership was in George's name. 
when I pointed out the part showing the house was his, my husband's face turned pale. That's fraud. I never thought you'd actually do it. And I definitely can't pay $80,000. My husband shouted angrily as soon as he realized the debt was now his responsibility. I was disgusted by his reaction, realizing there was no point in trying to have a reasonable conversation. Let's communicate through lawyers from now on. I said calmly, turning to my mother-in-law. I added with a smile. Cecilia, your son is in quite a mess. Please take care of him. Ignoring my husband's yelling, I walked out of their home for good. After that, he tried calling me several times, but I chose to ignore him and only communicated through my lawyer. Given our already strained relationship and my issues with his mother, the divorce was settled without any problems. My husband had kept insisting that the change of ownership of the house was fraud. However, since we had agreed to it when we got married two years ago, my lawyer assured me it was neither fraud nor illegal. With that reassurance, all my doubts disappeared. It turned out that they had planned for me to pay the entire remodeling cost as soon as I was discharged from the hospital. They had hoped to trap me right after my surgery and recovery. But in the end, since the house was in my husband's name, he was the one responsible for the payment. He had essentially trapped himself. On top of that, I was awarded alimony after our divorce. My husband, now facing an amount of debt he could never hope to pay, was left desperate. He may have borrowed money from dangerous sources, but that wasn't my problem anymore. Amid all the chaos, I received an apology from my father-in-law, Bob, who was still in the hospital with a broken leg. He said he was sorry for the actions of his wife and son, although it seemed Bob wasn't directly involved. He had ignored the situation for two years, just like my cold and uncaring husband. After briefly replying to Bob's message, I decided to cut all ties with that family and start a new chapter in my life. Since then, my health has gradually improved, and I've returned to work. When I was married, I used to draw illustrations while always being conscious of my husband's judgment, but now I can enjoy drawing freely, whenever I want. What started as a hobby has now turned into more. I've been getting job offers through the social media platform where I share my illustrations, and I now spend more time drawing for work than just for fun. Today, I'm on my way to see an old farmhouse in a rural town. My current dream is to buy this farmhouse using the alimony from my husband and my own savings and turn it into an art studio. This visit marks the first step toward making that dream come true. As I sit on the bus, looking out at the scenery, I remember the day I left the hospital, the day that changed my life forever. The beautiful nature outside looks the same as it did back then, but now my heart feels clear, and I'm filled with excitement for the new life that awaits me. The sunlight shining through the leaves makes them look so bright and full of life, and it dazzles me with hope.